turn to God's Word this morning. I want us to bow you together in prayer, asking the Lord to come to us and help us by His Holy Spirit in our time together. Our Father, we want to thank you this morning for the joy that is ours of just being able to bow before you in prayer, acknowledge your great love and faithfulness to us, thanking you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. Thank you, Father, for that great love that you demonstrated there at Calvary, and you did that, Lord, so that we might be redeemed. And we thank you that because you have redeemed us by your own precious blood, you're coming again for us to take us home to be with you forever in that celestial city whose builder and maker is God. And so, Father, we ask you that you will hallow this time together this morning. Grant us, O oh God, to know and to feel the hand of the Lord with us and upon us. Come to me, Lord, I pray. Anoint me with your Spirit, and we pray, O God, that your Word might be a blessing uh, to us today. So minister to us for Jesus' sake, and for his glory alone we ask it. Amen. Well, this morning, as I said, we want to speak on this subject of the rapture, a day when suddenly a whole generation of Christians will be transported uh, from earth to glory, uh, without going through the valley of the shadow of death. And uh, sure, we all want to be in that uh, company when suddenly we disappear to be with the Lord. On the 23rd of September uh, 2019, uh, Thomas Cook uh, they collapsed uh, and immediately ceased trading, and 150,000 people were left stranded uh, all over the world in different places. And uh, at that time, uh, the people were panicking about how they would get home, but a massive airlift swung into operation uh, uh, with the secretary of, with the, with the transport secretary, Grant Schatz, uh, said uh, a dozen, uh, dozens of chartered planes have been hired to fly customers home. Well, I believe that one day there's going to be many more than 150,000 people stranded on planet Earth. That's a sad thing. Many are not ready. Many are not prepared. And so they will be left behind in this old world of darkness and sin. And what a time that will be because it will be whenever God wages war against the nations of the world and that time of great uh, tribulation uh, that will come upon this world. And you don't want to be here uh, when that happens because there'll be no chartered aircrafts uh, to get you out uh, after the Lord uh, comes back. And very telling, in Matthew's Gospel 25, uh, Jesus told the parable of the foolish 
why the foolish uh, virgins and the wise virgins. They all expected to go in with the bridegroom, but five of them were foolish because they had no oil. They had the outward trappings of religion, but they didn't have the vital ingredient, uh, oil in their lamps, and so they were shut outside. And friend, there is that event coming when those who are not ready, uh, when the Lord comes, will be left behind, will be left behind. The one I am, uh, there is a, a day coming, Jesus said, that he would come again and his feet would stand upon the Mount of Olives. Now there are two comings. There's the rapture of the church when he comes to the air, and then there's when he comes uh, to the Mount of Olives and his feet stand upon the Mount of Olives, and he will be coming with his people at that time uh, to finally wage final war against the nations of earth at the great battle of Armageddon after the seven years' uh, tribulation. Now, if you differ in your views from me on that, well, that's all right, uh, but uh, this is just how uh, many people see it, and uh, I want us to uh, think about that this morning. Uh, the one, of course, that I'm speaking about is that time when he comes suddenly, unexpectedly. Uh, that's the time uh, that I want us, uh, theologians have called it, the rapture of the church, the catching away of a whole generation of believers. And uh, uh, it is the next big event in Bible prophecy when he comes to take home to heaven those who are his own. There's much speculation uh, about many things concerning the end times. Uh, we're not interested in speculation, but we are interested in what the Scripture says. And uh, from the passages that we have read together, another passage that we could have uh, included, there is ample evidence to tell us that he's coming back again. He went away, but he's coming back again. So let's just examine it uh, this morning. There are five different uh, words that I want us to consider. How, what, where, when, and why. First of all, the rapture. What? What is the rapture? Just what theologians and Christians have talked about when they speak of the rapture. What does it really mean? First of all, the meaning of the rapture. There we have it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 17. It talks about being caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Suddenly caught away to meet the Lord in the air. Snatched away suddenly. Not announced, but suddenly we will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Although the word rapture doesn't actually appear in Scripture, the concept of it is very clearly uh, defined for us. Rapture means to transport from one place to another, to snatch away by external force, a force outside of ourselves. And according to Scripture, there will be a generation of believers that will not taste of physical death, not taste of physical death, because the Lord Jesus will come to the air for his bride, his church, his own people, whom he has redeemed with his own blood. He's going to come for his own, and suddenly, without warning, take them out of this world, the saved, those who are trusted alone in Christ as their Savior and as their Lord. They will experience the invisible return of the Lord. You see, this is an invisible return because Peter talks about it in 2 Peter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. When a thief's coming, he doesn't warn people. He just comes suddenly. Also in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 2, the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief, as a thief. He will take his church out of this world, and the world won't realize uh, what has actually happened until 
it's over. Also, Jesus himself spoke of this sudden catching away of believers in Matthew 24 and verse uh, 40 refers to this when Jesus uh, speaks of two being in the field, one shall be taken and the other left. Two in the field, working together, one is saved, the other is not. Jesus says one will be taken and the other will be left behind. Two people will be sleeping in the one bed. One will be taken because one knows the Lord, the other doesn't. One will be taken and the other left. The thief in the night. That's why we need to be in a state of readiness when he comes. Those who are left behind will know what has happened, but it'll be too late, too late to make preparation whenever that takes place. If you're saved and Jesus comes uh, while you're still alive, we will uh, bypass the undertaker and uh, we will go to be with the Lord uh, forever and forever when suddenly we leave this world behind. <clears throat> the world is becoming increasingly sinful and wicked. Uh, Paul writing about it in Second Timothy 3.1, he says, Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Perilous times. We're living in those kind of times. I was just uh, looking up how many wars is going on and uprising going on in the world at this present time. There's uh, well over a hundred different wars and uprisings taking place right now in our world. All signs all pointing toward the fact that this event can't be very far Away. We're not talking about the signs this morning, uh, but uh, just to highlight the fact that the event is closer than many realize. Then there's the mystery of the rapture. The mystery of the rapture. That, uh, Paul, writing to the Corinthians, talked about that in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, nor all going to die, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. A mystery. When the word mystery uh, is used in Scripture, it's not, it doesn't refer to something that is mysterious but rather it refers to some truth which God has up until now not revealed. A truth that has not been previously revealed in Scripture. The Old Testament taught the truth about the resurrection. And Job had that truth in 1925-26, for he says, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. And though after uh, my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Thank God those who are sleeping in Jesus, those who have died, will rise. And as, but as Thessalonians says, they're going to rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Until 1 Corinthians, there were only two people uh, that had missed death. That was Enoch and Elijah, who had entered God's presence without going through the valley of the shadow of death. However, now Paul says, I show you a new revelation from God. I show you a mystery, something totally new. And uh, Paul is revealing this to them. I sh you, you'll not all sleep. You'll not all die. The body will not, all of your bodies will not sleep in the grave. It was the fact that some believers would be translated into God's presence in a new method, a new way, a new way. They would not go through the avenue of death. There's much we do not understand 
but to the one who made man out of the dust of the earth. It's no problem for God to gather the human body up again and resurrect it to meet him and to change that body into a perfect body with no decay. And of course, we will be changed as well. Even though we haven't died, our human body is going to be changed and we're going to get a brand new body when in the, the resurrection. And I'll just be able to walk around heaven just like the rest of you when that happens. Uh, we're getting something brand new whenever Jesus Christ comes back again for his own. So we will be changed. White Pentecost, he says, one generation of believers one day will experience this change. A whole generation are going to experience this change. At the rapture, those who are not with him in heaven will suddenly find themselves clothed with a new body. Simultaneously, Christians uh, then alive on earth will be changed in the twinkling of an eye be the resurrection of the dead in Christ and the changing of the believers who know the Lord. And this mortal, Paul says, which will put on immortality. This mortal body of ours that's subject to K and uh, all the rest of it. We're going to get a brand new body, a body that's like unto his body, a body without uh, corruption, a body that is perfect. The second thought I want to leave with you is the rapture. Why? Why has it to happen? First of all, it has to happen to fulfill Scripture. The rapture must happen if Scripture is to be fulfilled. Jesus told us in his word uh, that we will, uh, it will be fulfilled. Uh, everything that God says in his word will be fulfilled to the very detail. And so it is in the, all that's written about the rapture and about the coming again of the Lord Jesus will be fulfilled. And he has told us that in, in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 14. Uh, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also would sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Not only is he coming to fulfill Scripture, but he's coming to fulfill his promise. Jesus himself said in John's Gospel, chapter 14, he says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And then he goes on to say that in his Father's house there are many mansions. I will go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, he says, I will come again. I will come again. That's the promise of Jesus. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's what he has promised. That's what he has said he will do. He will come again and receive us unto himself. Jesus will fulfill his promise and he will take his bride because we who are the Lord's are the bride of Christ and he's coming for his bride. The church of Jesus Christ is called the bride of Christ and like the custom was in the New Testament, the bridegroom would go uh, to the bride's house and take the bride and bring her to his house to bring her to his house. So, the Lord is going to come to us. He's going to bring us, his bride, home to heaven in this great event that we have just uh, been reminded of. And then, whenever he gets us there, there'll be the great wedding feast, the marriage supper of the Lamb, when all who know the Lord will, have been, will meet together in that great meeting uh, at the marriage supper of the Lamb. What an event. What lies ahead for us as God's people is something thrilling. It's something out of this world. It's something to look forward to because uh, of what is 
to take place. Not only is he coming to fulfill Scripture and coming to fulfill his promise, but he, there, he's also going to come and clear the way for judgment. One day God will say, it's enough. Sin has reached its limit. And sure, sin is reaching its limit, isn't it, in these days. The cup of iniquity will be filled up and God's patience will give way to his wrath and give way to his judgment on this old world. As on that day when God took Noah and his family out, then judgment came, the flood came. But God, first of all, took his believing people out. He did the same with Lot. He brought Lot out of Sodom before he rained fire and brimstone down on Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sinfulness. So the Lord will take his people home before he reigns judgment on this world. And when the, Christian, uh, when the Christians are removed, he will uh, turn uh, his uh, attention to the earth and his wrath will be poured out on all who have rejected him in what's known as the Great Tribulation Period. Even before the great white throne uh, of judgment, he's going to first of all judge the nations when he comes uh, in wrath and in judgment upon a godless world. Friends, we live in such a world today, a godless world, and God is going to judge this world. It seems as if God's patience uh, seems to hold out, uh, but one day, one day, God's patience will weary and there will come this awful time of judgment on uh, the world and on the nations of the world. The first three chapters in the book of the Revelation speaks of the seven churches, and uh, it's known as the, the church age. The last mention of the church is the Laodicean church, and sadly the Laodicean church was the lukewarm church the self-satisfied church, self-sufficient church, and uh, Jesus calls on them to repent. I believe that we're living in that kind of day today, that Laodicean age, that careless age about spiritual things even in the church of Jesus Christ. But the next time we read of the church is in chapter 19 of the book of the revelation. So there are those chapters in between where there's no mention of, uh, the, uh, <coughs> of the church. The church has been taken out. And uh, where is the church of Jesus Christ then between chapter 4 and chapter 19? If you look at chapter 4 and verse 1, it's a very telling verse. And after this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and the first voice when I heard was as it were of a trumpet calling unto me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things that must be hereafter. A door is opened in heaven, and the church of Jesus Christ sees their beloved. Here's the call of their beloved. And to come up hither, to come up to be with the saints in glory, and the saints will be removed uh, to make clearance for God's judgment to be poured out upon this world, which will be a war zone when God takes his own people out. The next thing I want you to notice is the rapture. How? How will God do it? How will God do it? I don't know, but the Bible gives us the sequence of events. Uh, we need to remember uh, it will happen in a twinkling of an eye. Now, it doesn't take long to do that. In the twinkling of an eye, just as sudden as that, we'll be gone. As sudden as that. That's what the Scripture says in uh, 1 Corinthians 15. In the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. In the twinkling of an eye, it will all take place. It says in verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Look at the shout. That's the first thing here that there is. There's the shout. Jesus 
will descend from heaven to what the apostles called the air, somewhere within the earth's atmosphere. And then there's the shout or the order of the command for the dead to rise. The word shout here is a word used for a command. It's issued by a military leader. And Jesus will give the command to Christians who have died, uh, and they will obey that command. Uh, like Lazarus. Uh, remember Jesus, whenever he called Lazarus, he says, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus. And what happened? Lazarus was risen from the dead. So it will be that the dead, those who have died in Christ, they, the, the, the voice of God will call them forth out of their graves from wherever they are, and it will take them home to be with the Lord. Blessed and holy is he that is part on the first resurrection. That's the first resurrection. There's the second resurrection, which is the resurrection of the unconverted. Now, that will not take place after, uh, the, uh, after the millennial reign of Christ, uh, at the great white throne judgment, when those who have died out of Christ will be called to appear before the great white throne of judgment. The first was uh, at the tomb of Lazarus, the three times uh, that Jesus gives that uh, shout to rise. Uh, there was at the grave of Lazarus, and uh, he called Lazarus by name, and Lazarus awoke. Then there was at the time of the cross, the graves were opened at the time uh, Jesus died on the cross. And third uh, is uh, the shout uh, when uh, we will uh, just... Well, as we have just mentioned, these Christians who have died will rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet them in the air. And then there's the voice of the archangel, not only the shout of the Lord, but the voice of the archangel. When God puts his plans into operation, he frequently uses angels as his agents. So the archangel, as the herald of Christ, will repeat the order. Because the rapture uh, will be as a thief, suddenly, unexpectedly, most Christians believe that the shout will only be heard by those who are the Lord's. And I believe that is true. Uh, but are you tuned in? Because if you're not tuned in to the frequency of heaven, you'll not hear the command to rise if you have died or even if you're still alive, you'll not hear the command to rise to be with the Lord. You need to be tuned in to heaven's frequency. In uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.18, it says, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. What a reunion that's going to be. What a blessed reunion. And we'll know each other on that great day. And uh, he says, comfort one another. What a comfort it is to the Lord's people. And then there's the sound of the trumpet. The Jewish assemblies were called together by the sound of the trumpet. In the Old Testament, God told Moses to sound two trumpets if he wanted to gather the whole nation of Israel together. But you see here on this occasion, it's the trumpet singular, and that comes into play with Moses as well, because when one trumpet was blown, it was only the princes of Egypt, of, of Israel, that were called to worship, just the princes. And so it is, it's just a believer that will be called, because there'll just be the singular trumpet sound. So the two trumpets were for the, all of Israel to come, but the, the one singular was only for the princes. And so there'll be that singular sound of the trumpet, and we will be called home to meet the Lord in the air. And at the rapture, only one trumpet is sounded. Not everyone is summoned to heaven, only those who were part of his church, only those who are part of his church, only those who are saved, are going to gather to worship in heaven for all eternity. Then one trumpet uh, will forever separate the Christian 
from the non-Christian. That's a sobering thought. That sound of the trumpet will separate forever those who are saved and those who are not. I don't know what category you fall into this morning. I'm sure most of you are Christian, but perhaps there's someone here and you're not. You're not. You need to prepare for it. You need to get saved. You need to be ready for the call of the Lord. That trumpet will herald joy for the believer, and it will, her it will herald destruction. And what a scene when people will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, Jesus said. It's like the magnet held over iron and plastic pins. What will rise to the magnet? The iron pins will rise. The plastic ones won't. And friend, if we are the Lord's, we'll rise. But if we're not the Lord's, we'll be left behind. The rapture, when? It will occur as I said, I believe, before the tribulation. Then Antichrist will be revealed after certain prophecies has been fulfilled. And friends, I believe that there are many prophecies that are fulfilled these days. We're living in the end days. So much happening in our world. So much happening in our world today that points toward the fact that Jesus is coming. Friend, have you got your eye on that day when you will be with the Lord forever, rejoicing in His mercy and in His grace? There's nothing to stop Jesus returning today. Nothing. If you knew that He would return before 12 o'clock tonight, would you have anything you would need to do spiritually? Would there be anything you would need to do spiritually if you were to come? Or are you ready? In a state of readiness, waiting for his return, waiting for the bridegroom. You know what a bride's like waiting for, for the bridegroom? All excited. Are you excited about waiting for the coming of the Lord? Are you ready? What preparation there goes into the bride to get ready for that day? Are you ready? Ready, waiting, watching? That at any moment, he might come. The verse goes, there's a whole lot of people going home. By the signs of the times, it won't be very long. In the twinkling of an eye, we'll all be gone. There's a whole lot of people going home. Will you go? Will you go home? You have a mission coming up. And there's people, friends, and neighbors, and acquaintances all around that are not saved. This is an opportunity to try to round them up, to get them in, to hear the Word of God so that they might be ready, that they might be waiting for the coming of the Lord. Oh, friend, do all you can while you can, and then you'll have no regrets on that final day when he comes, when he comes, and he is coming, and he's coming soon. Therefore, be ye also ready, Jesus says, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. May God bless these few thoughts to our hearts even today. We're going to sing a hymn uh, that reminds us of this fact. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the old is called up yonder, I'll be there. Lovely hymn reminding us of the coming of the Lord. Will you be ready when the Lord comes? May the Lord bless you as you listen to these verses. When the trumpet of 
the Lord shall shine, the time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll yonder I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder when the roll Called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder.